Hey, welcome, great people. We are live. Welcome, Every Nation Rangsuk and anyone else who's watching. Here we are doing church online. So excited to be with you. So excited to be able to connect with our church family. Looking forward to a really great time together. How about we open in prayer? Great idea. You go ahead, darling. Okay. Lord, we just bless every person watching right now, wherever they are, in homes, in small gatherings across the city. We declare a blessing upon every single gathering that is watching this video. We bless every person, every family they represent, their loved ones. We declare your grace and hedge of protection mm -hmm. around them. That's right. Lord, we just bless this time that we're going to have together that in the next 30 minutes, would you release revelation? Would you encourage your people? Would you show us how heaven sees the things that are going on right now? Mm -hmm. And so I ask heaven invade every one of these homes, heaven invade every one of these gatherings. We choose to rise up to say, we want to see how you see things, Lord. We want to see how you see, think how you think with the mind of Christ, love as you love, love as you've lived. And, and we just release right now over every word that is spoken, your anointing to break yokes and open our minds to think like you in Jesus' name. That's right. Lord, thank you for this really, really great time together. So we want to spend some time and we want to talk through a concept of just coping with change, coping with trials, coping with difficulties. Gosh, this is an unprecedented time. It's a time where we are, where we are facing issues we've never faced before. COVID-19 is upon us. Uh, perhaps you even know people who are uh, battling with the disease. We are in social distancing, which is a new thing for all of us. We are struggling to find hand sanitizer, toilet paper, all the essentials. But but God is with us nonetheless. In addition, it's just a the financial strain right now in the nation is quite mm. marked. Uh, we face some very big financial challenges, but we know through all of this that God is able. God yes. is with us. Yes. And so we want to talk through some of that. We are starting a new series called Beautiful Transformation, which is from First Peter. The reason we wanted to do this series now is that this letter was written to a church that, that was going through hardships. It's, the people had been scattered from Jerusalem. They were living in different areas around, around Asia Minor, Turkey kind of area, which is now Turkey. And they they were facing persecution. In fact, uh, it alludes to a persecution that was about to come the, uh, under the Emperor Nero, where, where, where Christians were actually burned alive as human torture. So they were facing some really, really tough stuff. And we, we felt like this, would, this book would give us some handles to really to really cope with what we're going through and give us a Jesus perspective because it's easy to get the fear perspective of the world and forget yeah. that God God is God is with us and that the gospel thrives in times like this the kingdom the kingdom is not dictated to by our environments the kingdom is not dictated to by what's going on around us that we in fact can can progress and thrive even in difficult times because we anchored in another kingdom. We're not anchored in this world. We anchored in the truth of who God is and what he's done for us. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is a sure foundation. In other words, it guarantees something. It guarantees a God who's with us, a God who is able to overcome everything. And we can, we can rely on that. That's right. Absolutely. Um, so if, if you are interested in First Peter, it's it's a fascinating book. It it really helps Christians that are living in in pagan environments. In other words, environments that were contrary to the gospel. And interestingly enough, it really well paganism of the time is very similar to the kind of environment we live in now. So in paganism, any kind of religion was was allowed, and people worshipped hundreds of different gods, but if you profess your God is the only God, you were in big trouble. Then you were persecuted. Then it was, there was really, a, you were, you were, you were considered um, an outcast. And really, so much of that is true in our day in that you can believe anything you want, but just, just start saying that Christianity is the only way. And then that, 
that's just what isn't done. So religious pluralism, as they say, is very welcomed, but anyone proclaiming a, a, a truth or an absolute truth certainly is pushed aside and said that is not acceptable in our world. So, so they were facing those kind of things, those kind of persecutions for that, though ridicule. Most of us don't experience persecution, but we certainly have all experienced some level of ridicule or just negativity towards our claims about Jesus Christ. And in, in this environment, Peter is telling them how to live in light of the trials and the tribulations and in light of the persecution. So if you are... If you have your Bibles, we would love you to please open with us to 1 Peter 1. We're going to read it there. It says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who are elect exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, in the sanctification of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and for the sprinkling of his blood, may grace and peace be multiplied to you. Amen. Moving on to verse 3. Blessed be the Father, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Verse 6, in this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perished though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. 1 Peter 1, 1 to 9. I see we have some people joining us. Welcome all of you, Connie, yeah. Pauline, Masejo. So great to have you uh, with us. We just read through 1 Peter 1, 1 to 9, and we're just talking about some of the some of the issues faced by the Christians in that time. What I, what I find very interesting is that Peter uh, was so qualified to, to write this letter in that he had undergone some very significant, significant cultural upheaval in his life. He had, he had been raised Jewish. He loved the Jewish faith. He had, was a devout and good Jewish boy. And then when, uh, when he encountered Christ, he began to a journey of beginning to embrace other cultures and other, other people from different people groups. And we see his journey. Remember in Acts 10 how he was confronted with that vision and he realized now that God was saying this gospel could go everywhere, it could go to all of the nations and all of the people groups. And then he went and preached to the, to the Gentiles and the Holy Spirit fell upon them. It was just a lovely, chaotic, beautiful moment that he experienced. And you would think that would have convinced him forever that, gosh, now everyone can, everyone can be part of the kingdom. But no, we read later in Galatians how Paul had to rebuke him because when people came from James before he had been eating with the Gentiles and just fellowshipping with them and after this experience, he suddenly said, no, he's not going to do that anymore. And he kind of went back to his extreme Judaism and Paul rebuked him and said, hey, God, why? Why is this? It's hypocrisy. And and we don't hear whether he particularly repented at that moment, but we do have a speech he made in Acts 15, which in which he reiterated how everyone was supposed to be in the kingdom. And why I love this is I could see Peter going from just having this cultural upheaval where things are just changing and he has to work out a new way of living and a new way of approaching life. And I think, although we're not maybe experiencing that exact thing, we are experiencing cultural upheaval right now. Sure. You know, it's like every, everything's changing. We have to work out a new way of living, a new way of approaching things. And I think that's why this book is so relevant to us, that Peter Peter knows these kind of experiences that we're having, and he's, he's writing into just such situations as that. He, he, he makes two statements at the beginning of Peter. He says, uh, in verse 3, he says, we're born again to a living hope, and that we have an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Yeah. You know, he's, he's talking about 
in light of Jesus, we have a very secure future. And I, those of you who are watching, you don't know just how much Andrew values Psalm 91. I've heard him speak it, preach it, say it. I think he said, said it nearly once a week, maybe three, four times a week, all the years that we've been married. I know it off by heart just by listening to Andrew. And I thought, you know, Psalm, Psalm 91 just speaks so much about the secure future we yeah. have in Christ. So I'd love you to just talk a little bit about that, darling. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, I was privileged to have a week away just seeking the Lord in the mountains, doing a prayer retreat last week. And I felt like God gave me 19 confessions to counteract COVID-19. <laughs> and many of those come from Psalm 91. I, I will post some of those on our social media. I may even put a video up later. Uh, on our YouTube channel. But I, I want to do something with you that is possibly a little bit more interactive. So if you have your Bible, won't you open up to Psalm 91? And Psalm 91 is just such a relevant scripture. I've, like Carol says, I've prayed it over our family regularly. We've seen God answer that in many different ways. And so what I'm going to do is, is actually just walk you through a slightly adapted version of Psalm 91 for what we are facing at the moment with COVID-19. And so if you're there in Psalm 91, I'm going to start with verse 1. And the promise is for those, every one of us, who chooses to dwell in the shelter of the Most High. And it says that those of us who choose to say, God, I make you my dwelling place. I'm not going to make the world my dwelling place. I'm not going to choose to think like the world. I want to choose to think like you. I want to dwell in your presence because heaven is not worried about what's going on right now. Heaven's not full of fear. Heaven is rejoicing in what God can do in the midst of a time that actually is a glorious opportunity for us. So if you're there, I want you to, I'm, I'm going to lead us through a confession together of each verse. And I'm going to just say a line and ask you wherever you are, if you're just watching by yourself, say it out loud with me. If you're watching as a group, say it out loud with me. And let's make this a confession. And so I want us to say this, because I dwell in the shelter of the Most High. Because I dwell in the shelter of the Most High. I will rest under the shadow of the Almighty. I will rest under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of you, Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress. I will say of you, Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress. My God in whom I trust. My God in whom I trust. Now here comes the promise I want us to confess. Surely you will deliver me. Surely you will deliver me. From every snare of the enemy. From every snare of the enemy. And this deadly pandemic. And this deadly pandemic. It's almost like David knew what was coming. <laughs> yes. And then he goes on in verse 4. You will cover me with your feathers. You will cover me with your feathers. And under your wings I will find refuge. And under your wings I will find refuge. Your faithfulness will be my shield. Your faithfulness will be my shield. And defending wall that surrounds me. And defending wall that surrounds me. I will not fear the terror of the night. I will not fear the terror of the night. Nor any harm that comes by day. Nor any harm that comes by day. And then he goes on. No pestilence that stalks in the darkness. No pestilence that stalks in the darkness. Nor any plague that destroys at midday. Nor any plague that destroys at midday. I want us to pause there and just say, when we're dwelling in God, when he covers us with his feathers, under his wings we find refuge, that really there's no fear in that place. And we don't need to fear any plague that comes. We don't need to fear any assignment of the enemy that comes. And he goes on in verse 7, and we declare this. A thousand may fall at my side. A thousand may fall at my side. Ten thousand at my right hand. Ten thousand at my right hand. But it will not come near me. It will not come near me. And we don't wish any thousands to fall either way. But what that is saying is, no matter how many people on either side of me are battling with us or are struggling in fear or overreacting or panicking, we don't look at that. We look to God and say, no matter what's going on to the left and right, I'm trusting in him. And he goes on in verse eight and says, I will only observe with my eyes. I will only observe with my eyes. And see the punishment of my enemies. And see the punishment of my enemies. This is an enemy that is coming against us. God has destroyed our enemies at the cross and they will be punished when we hide ourselves in him and resist them. Trust in God, resist the enemy. He will flee. 
And then he goes on again, make the most high your dwelling. Seriously, Psalm 91 is all about where do you dwell? Where are you choosing to put your vision, your sight? Where are you choosing to think from? And we're choosing to think from heaven. And so let's declare this, that as we make the most high our dwelling, what are the promises that come with that? So let's say, because I make the most high my dwelling, because I make the most high my dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, even the Lord who is my refuge, no harm shall befall me nor my family. No harm shall befall me nor my family. No disaster shall come near our dwelling place. No disaster shall come near our dwelling place. For he will command his angels. For he will command his angels. Concerning us. Concerning us. To guard us in all our ways. To guard us in all our ways. They lift us up in their hands. They lift lift us up in their hands. So we won't be harmed by anything. So that we won't be harmed by anything. I will tread upon the lion and the cobra. I will tread upon the lion and the cobra. I will trample the great lion and the serpent. I will trample the great lion and the serpent. In other words, no matter how great this looks, if you are facing a cobra or a lion head on, most of us are going to be full of fear and trepidation and think I can't do this. When I'm hiding in Jesus, I will trample upon anything, no matter how great of an enemy it looks. And then this is a promise God gives us. And I've, I've converted this to something personal to say, the Lord says to me, the Lord says to me, because you love me, because you love me, I will rescue you. I will rescue you. I will protect you. I will protect you. For you acknowledge my name. For you acknowledge my name. You may call upon me. You may call upon me. And I will answer you. And I will answer you. I will be with you in trouble. I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you. I will honor you. I will deliver you. I will honor you. With long life, I will satisfy you. With long life, I will satisfy you. And show you my salvation. And show you my salvation. Friends, as we just choose to abide in God, as we choose to say, God, you're not worried about this. I'm just going to choose to say, cover me with your feathers under your wings. I'll find refuge. I'm going to choose to say, I love you knowing that you will rescue me, that you'll protect me. I'm going to acknowledge your name above every other thing that has been said and going on around me and know that you will be with me in trouble. You're not just going to deliver me, but he says, with long life, I will satisfy you. This will not cut short any of our lives. I declare a blessing over this church, over our That's members, right. over every one of their families. That Lord, no matter what comes from the enemy, you protect us. You cause us to rise above mm -hmm. these things. That not one person's life will be cut short because you will give us long life. You will satisfy us. You will show us your salvation. Mm -hmm. And I declare that over this church. And every person who watches this video, I release a blessing. We plead the right. blood of Jesus over them. I thank you, Lord, for a hedge of protection, as Joe prayed, a hedge of protection around us. That in the midst of all of this going on, this is such a great opportunity to pull into you and to think, what are you thinking, Jesus? How can we reach out to those who are so afraid right now? This is a glorious opportunity. Let us think like you and release that ability into those around us and destroy the power of the fear that the enemy is trying to bring. Amen. Amen. So great. Thank you, darling. I told you he's really great on Psalm 91. But I, I just wanted to remind us also, you know, a secure future that that we have an inheritance, as First Peter says, we have an inheritance that, that is secure, that is untarnishable, that is unerodible. And what I love about that is that we often think when calamities like this happen and when things don't work out the way we expect them to work out, that somehow God's plans have changed. Those dreams that we've always had, oh my gosh, now they, don't, they aren't valid anymore. We have to recalculate our whole lives. But Something I feel like God is saying to us is that the promises he's made to us in the past still stand. He, he made those promises knowing that this situation was going to come upon us. And he was still very confident that he was going to bring about these good things in our lives. And so I would just really encourage you that not to give up on your dreams, not to give up on what you feel like God has said for you yes. and your family, that this is not a season to abandon those, but this is a season to press into those, to, to find out from God how he's going to accomplish in these those in these times, how I can become the kind of person necessary to carry yeah. that dream forward. So I just do want to encourage you that God is not taken by surprise by this, that what he has promised you remains true and good and right for you. And he is continuing to work that plan for you. In addition, as Andrew said, you know, there are people around us terrified, terrified. 
and they don't know that they can have the same secure future that we have in Christ. And this is the time to start telling them that. That's right. To so start um, explaining the confidence you have. Because as we go around our, our lives, there's a confidence we carry because we know God is with us. And no matter what comes against us, he's already made provision for that. He's already walked into the future on our behalf and conquered these things. And therefore, we can step into our futures confident that that he will be there and he will show us how to live. He will show us what to do. He will have provided for our needs. He will have provided for everything that we face. So, so people around us are going to be asking questions. Why are you so confident? I've had so many people ask me, why are you not afraid? And my answer is because I know God is with me. And no matter what comes, I, I know I'm not immune to disaster. None of us are immune to problems. But we know this, that when those problems come, there's a shield of God's protection. We're hidden under the shadow of the Almighty. His, His wings cover us. So we face we face difficulties in a very different light from the people around us. And it's it's so great at this time to be able to invite people into that same protective place, that same fortress of God. So yeah, it's so it's so great to see all of you online. Thank you. <laughs> oh, gosh, there's so many of you now. I can't name you all, but welcome, yeah. welcome, lovely, lovely, lovely to see you. So we're talking from 1 Peter 1, uh, 1 to 9, and we've talked about how it Peter alludes to a secure future that we have in him. There's another point, though, that he makes, which I think is really important, is that when he moves on, and I'm just going to get there in my notes, hang on one minute, he talks about in verses 7 and 8, he says this, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. You believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. You know, he's talking to people undergoing persecution. They've yeah. been exiled. They, they're having to start their lives all over in a whole nother cu culture. So imagine the upheaval and the difficulty they're going through. And he's saying this is going to result in joy and praise and the glory of God is going to be revealed. And it's good. He's actually like saying that this hardship they, they're going through is actually going to be a fantastic, going to result in fantastic things and in the moment is producing joy in them. So in other words, he's saying not only you do, you, do you have a secure future, but you have a joy filled now. I love that. I love that because so many of us are thinking in life in general, not just during this time, but when we just get over this hurdle, we'll have joy. When we just get over this problem, we'll have joy. But I think the promise of the Bible is you can have joy now. Yes. That even when you're going through a tough time, you're going to have joy. And you, you're meant to live from that place of joy, no matter what's happening around you. It's an unexplainable joy. It's a joy that is not based on our circumstances. It's a joy that's based in the knowledge that God is with us, that God has conquered on our behalf, that, that we are right with him, that his love and his life is filling us. We're satisfied in him. We're not striving for something to make us feel valuable or, or good about ourselves, but innately in him. We are satisfied and we're feeling, we feeling good about ourselves and about life and about our futures. And that produces a joy. I, I, when I was thinking about this, it, it reminded me of a situation in our early marriage. And I, I, I did, if you, if you look on this YouTube channel, you'll see another post that is, uh, it's a more classic sermon on 1 Peter 1 verse 9, where we talk about uh, how the church faced pandemics in the past and mm -hmm. uh, thrived, actually. And I'd love you to go and listen to that at some stage when you get a chance. But but in the meantime, I I, I want to share this analogy um, as we, we chat more around this topic now. I want to share the story from our early marriage. It is in the other sermon as well, but I, I found it quite amusing and a, a, a good picture of what Peter is talking now. The So when we first got married, Donnie, you remember that dining, we actually still have that dining room suite. We bought this dining room suite. Well, we have the table, not the chairs. But we scrimped, we saved, we, ah, gosh, remember how we sacrificed to buy that dining room table and chairs it was like it was like our biggest purchase ever we were like ah oh, we, we thought we were in the in running in the fast lane with this with this and so we bought it and loved it it was beautiful it was mahogany just loved it 
And when we got it home, we discovered the table was magnificent, but the chairs were terrible, absolutely terrible. And they were cheap wood that had just been stained mahogany. And when when people sat on the chairs, the, the legs weren't strong enough to hold them. So the legs would just kind of break and burst out to the one side. And So much fun. <laughs> tipping the person onto the floor. So, so we had a lot of fun meals with that. But Andrew is the most fantastic fix anything kind of person. So he, right. Donnie, you fix those chairs. I mean, you fix them well. So he, he glued them, he bolted them, he put hinge, um, braces in, he did wonderful things. But we were very, I mean, still I love to have people over to house and host people. And we, we would often have people over and I would call them to the table for dinner time. And I would, I would hold my breath as our guests sat on these chairs, knowing that that the possibility of those chairs breaking was quite high. And, you know, I would just hold my breath. And when the chair held, I would just like, this joy would well up in me. Like, oh, my gosh, it's, everything's going to be okay. And I feel like this is something of what Peter is talking about. He's talking about a genuineness of our faith, faith being tested by trials. You know, you know, I don't, I don't think that any one of us understand the greatness of Christ in us. I don't think we we comprehend the fullness of what what God is doing through us. And sometimes God uses trials to show us who we are. It's like he knows exactly what's going on in your life. He knows what he's yeah. done in your life. But sometimes we don't know what he's done. We don't know the repairs he's made to our faulty chairs. He doesn't yeah. know. We don't know how he's shored up our weak areas, how he's spoken into those disappointments and those heartaches and how he's made us new and, and good and stronger than we ever were before. And sometimes he, he allows us to find that out by, by when a trial comes, us seeing, oh, my word, when that trial comes and sits on us, so to speak, our legs hold, those repairs are strong and we... We are able to make it. We find ourselves more confident, stronger, more with more wisdom than we thought we had. And sometimes, sometimes a trial comes along and we discover maybe there is a bit of a weakness there. Maybe one of the legs does break or doesn't hold up under the pressure. But instead of that being a, a terrifying thing, it's, oh, my word, look, look at this area. The Holy Spirit says to us, I want to come and fix this area. I want to bolt it, glue it to make it better. And we are able to cooperate with him because now we see that that area needs some help. And so at the same time, it also produces joy in us. Oh, wow, look what God is doing in my life. Look what he's done in my life, the strength that he's brought, that I can see now as I face that trial. And look how he's, he's allowing me to cooperate with him to allow that weak area to be strengthened. So when Peter talks about um, the that we rejoice with joy and our, that is inexpressible and we and we are filled with glory in the face of trials. He's talking about this is that the trials reveal God's glory in us. They reveal yeah, his strength. Right. So it's such an exciting, um, it's an exciting time. I, I, I feel like I want to prophesy to each and every one of you that in these next days, you are going to see God do things through you that you had never imagined. You're going to find the strength of Christ rising up you, up in you to levels you had never imagined. I, you know, I've heard testimonies from some of you, how you've led people to the Lord in this time, how you've been able to witness in this time, how you've been able to help people, how innovative ideas have come to you as you got your children at home, how you've been able to just, just encounter Jesus in a greater measure than ever before. And let this be our portion during this time. Let this be our portion during this time. Anything you want to add, great man? Yeah, listen, I believe... God is using this to create opportunities. Uh, what the enemy intends for evil, God always turns for good. That's right. And so for us to understand that no matter what we are going through, when the rest of the world panics, we pull into Jesus and find solutions. That's right. This is the beauty of tapping into heaven and dwelling in that place is that heaven is full of solutions. And so if you are facing challenges in this time, pull into heaven. If you know of others who are panicking and full of fear, mm. start to... This is a great opportunity where people are more vulnerable and more open to having someone share with them than possibly ever before. It's true. And uh, trust God to show you, give you those divine open doors, divine opportunities 
and make the most of them because I believe this is a chance for the church to rise up and really become the solution. As if you watch the other video um, of the sermon that is up on YouTube, there was pre-recorded. Um, Carol goes into just how the church was such a solution in times of pandemics. And uh, we, we really can be those people that, that are going to rise up and show that our God is real, that this is not just religion, this is relationship. Amen. And that we choose to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and show that same love to our neighbors that Christ has put inside of us. Amen. You know, if, if I want to give you a concluding statement for what we've just been talking about now, I would want to say that as we face the social upheaval and challenging trials of our time, a sense of a secure future and the reality of a joy filled now will cause us to thrive. Yes. So we, we, we trusting for you, with you, together as a community, that, that the sense of a secure future would be our portion and that we would, we would live in a joyful now, that every day would be filled with joy, that we would experience his presence, his joy, his life with us. Amen. Just on some Family Matters Church, Musa got married yesterday. Yeah, she sure did. So exciting. She's off on honeymoon. So, uh, yeah, I'll be praying for her that she would have just a lovely time. We'll see her in a couple of weeks. So that's very exciting news. And we do just have a few announcements that I'm going to ask Andrew to make. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, as the chairman of this home, uh, I get to share some of the details. And <laughs> we, we are trusting, as you all know, we've been sharing this in our services for the last few weeks. But God is about to give us a home of our own. So as you are gathering in homes around the city, we still look forward to the fact that uh, by May we will have a place of our own. Amen. And so for those who don't know, we put an offer in on a beautiful property. That offer was accepted. Uh, we managed to find a property that has venues we can start using immediately, offices we can start using immediately um, for less than what we were uh, looking at other places that had no such thing. And so uh, we want to just give you an update of where we are at. And uh, we, we are just making great progress. As you know, we need to raise pledges of 50,000 a month by April. And so we are encouraging all of our members and just saying, contribute what you can, that every member knows I gave something towards that. And so in our, in our raising of those pledges, we trust him for 50,000 to come in. We have received 22 new pledges. We Very currently good. have raised 13,180 rand, and we celebrate that. Thank you, Jesus. Bless those who are pledging. Bless those who are giving. If you haven't made a pledge, we have online pledge forms. Uh, if you are in gatherings where there are other pledge forms, you can physically collect and fill out, but we invite you to follow the link that is on our website, that is on our social media platforms, Every Nation Ramsuch, uh, to download those forms, fill those out, and we encourage every person to pledge as God lays on your heart. We have... I'm just going to say, let, let's leave it there and let's pray, because I think we're out of time and we want, to, we want to give people an opportunity to pray for one another where you are. So I'm, we will, it, please, please um, download the other uh, video because it does have a little bit more details of this announcement that Andrew is making. Um, but I uh, would love you guys to take some time to pray for one another and uh, just to pray for one another for, for the dreams you have for the future. Let's, let's not give up on those dreams. And um, just you have some questions there. Your uh, your hosts will will give those questions to you. If you if you don't have those questions, um, just speak to your connect group leader. They will have them for you, and they will be able to forward them to you if you're not in the same area. But yeah, we'd love you to just go ahead and pray for one another. Um, just to let you know that we will be praying together online on uh, Facebook Live on our Every Nation Fa um, Robes of Facebook page um, at twelve thirty every day from Monday through Friday next week. Also at 7 p.m. On, on Wednesday, we'll be praying. I will I'll be leading a prayer time on my Facebook um, uh, post, my Facebook page, Carol Ann Gosman. And we will have daily devotions that are going to be on Facebook and Instagram that you can download and will help you just walk through this time in studying the Bible, etc. And Every Sunday, 9.30, this is where we're going to be, Facebook Live. We will also have a downloadable sermon ready for you on a weekly basis. So love you lots. You close, darling. And
and pray for the everyone out there. Yeah, so Lord, we just thank you that your word never returns to you void. It always mm. bears fruit to those who receive it and believe it. And so we we bless every person that has watched this video or is watching it later. We declare, Father, the power of your word over every one of them, that faith will replace fear, that hope will arise in their hearts, that they will see this as a glorious opportunity to press into you, yeah. to see you do more in their lives. We release the peace, the protection and provision of heaven over every one of our people. That, Father, you have solutions to everything and we release those. We ask that as they as they have opportunities to reach out to others, give them the words, give them the grace, give them the ability to silence the fears that are operating in other people's lives. And so Lord, we bless this church that even as a church, when we can't gather corporately, you're going to grow this church. You are going to cause people from north, south, east and west to pull into what you're doing here. We bless every church across this nation that is busy meeting online mm -hmm. or in smaller meetings that your church during this time is going to rise up and become strong. So Lord, bless them. Give them an amazing week, even though it's going to be a different week to what they've experienced before. We declare right now, this is going to be one of the most blessed weeks that you've had so far because you are choosing to hide yourself in the secret place of the Most High and rest under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. Love you all. See you soon.